Yidashimase! Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this week, we have Distropolis, the abstract shape twin stick shooter. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. From developer Igric and publisher No Gravity Games, Distropolis released for the Nintendo Switch in early December 2020. It had previously released for the PC via Steam in August of 2020, but of course today we're looking at the Nintendo Switch version. So this is a title that I quite like. It has some really nice roguelike elements to it that really draw me to the game, though there are some things that I complain about the game as well, but it is one, given the price point, I can recommend. So at the main menu, there aren't a whole lot of options here to look at, including options themselves. So selecting the play menu, we're taken to our player count. You can play from one to three players couch co-op. Unfortunately, there isn't any online. There is also a progress bar, and this progress bar will unlock new weapons and skills as you accumulate points in the game. It's a really neat feature to see. So today we'll be showing the game off as a two-player uh, game. Starting it, we're taken to our leaderboard, and from here we can actually start the game itself. So, the game t play takes place in a really nice geometric designed city, where everything is uh, basically simple squares and rectangles for the city itself. Our enemies also happen to be geometric shapes, starting off with these red squares. Uh, throughout the course of our run, we'll get additional types of enemies, uh, which will change in different shapes and ultimately sizes. As we destroy the enemies, sometimes they'll drop power-ups and weapons. The weapons are in the color blue, the power-ups are in the color yellow. And once we've destroyed enough enemies, we level up and are taken to this screen. And this is the part of the game I really love. So at the, every level, you're allowed to pick a skill. And initially, you start off with four skills available. There are There is a skill which will expand the options of skills you can choose from. So... They each do something different. So efficiency here, as an example, will increase your power-up duration. It's a really good skill to have. There's also hardened steel, which will give you additional health. Active cooling, which is a new one that I just unlocked through the progress bar. So actually, I'm actually pretty excited to use this one, and I think it's the one I will pick. Hitting enemies cools down active weapon. So every time you fire your weapon, if you watch the reticule that uh, is the direction we're aiming in, that reticule will, well, depending on the weapon, that reticule will ultimately gain a little uh, circle around it. That's the heat your weapon is generating, and if it gets uh, too hot, then of course the weapon itself overheats. So there are certain ways to deal with that. The act of cooling is one. There's also um, options like this heat sink here, or we, uh, but there are some better options. There's for an upgrade this time around. There's the supersonic bullets, which increases our projectile speed and damage. Anytime you can increase your damage in a roguelike, you definitely want to go that route. You can uh, hold two weapons at once, and it's possible to switch between them. So you can pick one weapon which is useful for uh, crowd situations and one weapon that's useful for maybe um, individual enemy uh, situations. So in this case, luck will increase our item drop chance. We also have the option for a faster shield regen, maximum shield capacity. Oh, this is definitely the one we want to go with, increasing both health and shield. So as far as our life and shield are concerned, so you can see that uh, we are have our shield and our life indicated in the top left and the top right for the one, player one and player two. Um, definitely more uh, ammunition in, uh, with that choice. Uh, so in addition to seeing your shield and your life, um, there's also the two weapons you have available displayed in those locations. Um, ooh, this one's a tough one. Uh, I, I like active defenses is a weird one where you re reflect damage back to the enemies that they deal them to you. Um, but another good one is just getting better item drop chance. 
Uh, anyway, where was I? So you have your uh, weapons displayed next to your shield and your health bar. And in the top left, you see your score as well as the level indicator, which is the crown and the number next to it, and then any active skills you have. Uh, here, this one's not as great of a selection. So Crystal Ice is an interesting skill. It, when, you're, when you're stationary, your weapon cooler is significantly faster, uh, but this is not the kind of game you just want to like pick a position and just hold it. So here, I think we'll go with... Favorite gun. Favorite gun is a pretty neat skill. It will increase the chance of one of your favorite weapon coming up. Although, which to pick? Which to pick? As far as crowd control, I feel like the bazooka is the best. An explosive weapon which will rapidly eat through the enemy forces. Ooh, uh, airstrike. That's another really fun um, skill. So, unfortunately, or rather, power up. So, unfortunately, throughout the course of a run, you're not going to see all the weapons, as there are a total of 15 different weapons. Although at this point, I do not have all of them unlocked, and there are also 12 power ups, and a grand total of 40 skills uh, that you'll ultimately unlock throughout the course of the gameplay. So, there's actually a lot of options here. Uh, some great choices here. Warehouse is a really interesting one. So the buildings that exist in the city, with this one, when they're destroyed, they have a chance of dropping items and the chance to get the item drop rebuild city, which will uh, rebuild the buildings, uh, also increases. So we'll take that one. Force field is a really great power up. It uh, puts a shield around both you and if you're playing in multiplayer, your partner as well. Uh, protecting you for a length of time. So ultimately, my favorite weapons in this game are probably the ones that are explosive, which is why I picked Bazooka as well, my favorite weapon for the choice of uh, your weapon. And you can see that it's actually working quite effectively. We see the bazooka coming up. So the weapons do have a set amount of ammunition and that's one of the reasons why you want to increase your uh, ammunition when you can. Uh, a couple interesting choices here. Super Senses is a good one in that it slows down the world's speed but increases your speed and so it makes it a little bit easier to get away from the enemies in a situation where you might be surrounded, which as the gameplay uh, progresses, that's a very likely uh, scenario. So, of course, what, a couple things I haven't talked about are the controls. It is your basic twin stick shooter, where you move with the left stick, aim with the right stick, and then to fire, in the case of the switch, you're using the right trigger for your uh, actual um, trigger. Uh, but here's where things are a little bit wonky with the control scheme. Instead of using some of the other... Ooh, Demolition Expert, definitely. Instead of using some of the other open uh, buttons uh, on the... that your fingers would be uh, naturally resting on, so the bumps or the triggers for your... Um, for swapping the weapon and for picking the weapons up, it has you uh, instead moving your finger away from the right stick to press B to pick up weapons or A to switch weapons. And this is a really bad choice in my mind as it ultimately um, chain, uh, ruins your ability to constantly fire and also when you let go of the stick uh, a lot of times your aim resets to a different position. So say I'm aiming up and firing, but in order to pick up a weapon or to swap weapons, I have to change how my fingers are positioned. And where you have, have the open uh, um, options of using, say, like the bumps or like the, the right trigger for that, it's a choice that just didn't make any sense to me and ultimately is my biggest complaint with the game. Ooh, so this skill set is very important. Um, once you start to hit like uh, the level 10 and above, things 
start to get quite difficult and it's very easy to get swarmed and have enemies uh, take you down very quickly. So the one I like best here is uh, Vampirism, which when you destroy enemies, they regenerate or give you 1% health regeneration, which can be huge when you're taking out tons of enemies. So it's also great to see that at the bottom of the screen here, we do have all the selected skills I picked at this point. Active cooling, supersonic bullets, mind and matter, etc, etc. I love being able to see how you've built together basically this run. So we're going to confirm the vampirism. Um, so, as uh, we've played through, instead of just fi fighting cubes, we've started to get other enemies like the um, rectangles, which fire lasers at us. There are pyramids, which lob um, basically artillery shells at us. And the newest enemy are these really dangerous cylinders, which fire waves of bullets around them. Uh, they're like depending it's really easy for the cylinders coupled with all the other enemies surrounding us to overwhelm us and basically lead to the end of your run and that's why like the bazooka is such a good choice just like eating through these enemies even if we take damage and lose our shields it's as long as you can be destroying like uh, the small fry then you'll be all right from an HP standpoint. And that is basically the Stropolis served up for your enjoyment. So the minus flavors, definitely the big one here are is the control scheme. I feel like it's a big design mistake to have your controls uh, require the player to move their fingers from the aiming stick in a twin stick to change weapons or to uh, pick up a new weapon. Uh, the other one I feel the game has is, at this point, the escalation becomes a bit too much to deal with. It's really easy to get swarmed by the enemies at this point in the game, and the number of enemies you need to destroy to advance to the next level becomes so overwhelming it's hard to really level up. Um, if you were to have the right um, weapon drops, and the right power-up drops, you might be alright, but even at this point it kind of feels like those get stingy. And it would be great if there were additional game modes to choose from. I feel the game mode, uh, the main gameplay that's here is definitely worth it, but I could definitely go for a couple different styles of uh, gameplay with the same um, options that are available here. As far as the plus flavors are concerned though, I love the various weapons you have to choose from. Some of them uh, I would definitely pass on in some scenarios. Um, the laser I'm not that big of a fan of and some of the single fire weapons like the shotgun and the magnum, while they can be powerful, they're not the best choice. But the semi-automatic ones like the SMG, the assault rifle, the mini guns are a lot of fun to use. The explosive ones are really your best bet, especially if you can get the skill uh, demolitionist. Uh, there's the progression where you're unlocking additional weapons and skills through gameplay, earning points, and then the skill system itself, getting a new skill every single time you level up. I love that kind of gameplay. So ultimately, with, especially given the roguelike feel this game gives me, it's one that I can recommend. I just wish that there was just a little bit more to the gameplay. Alright, that'll just about wrap up this week's episode of Shoot'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for joining me this week, and I look forward to seeing you again next week.